Glandular stimulation through electrical impulses was correct. A few days ago, you were as small as your companion. And now look at you.
Hello. This is Dr. Carruthers speaking. Yeah, this is Heath. Yeah, Henry Moore and I are having a little get-together at my home tonight. We want you to come. Why, that's nice of you, and I appreciate it. But I'm very busy working on a formula for a new shaving lotion. Oh, but Doc, this is my daughter's idea. And she's going to be awfully disappointed if you don't show up. Don't take no for an answer. Make him come. Yeah, you see, it's a sort of a, a special occasion. I bet Mary is going to announce her engagement to that young rascal, Don Morton. Tell her I'll be there. Goodbye. Well, it's all arranged. He's coming. He's going to be surprised when I find the special occasion that's presenting him with this bonus check. Doc's late. Wonder if he's been called out on a case. Perhaps I'd better phone him. Now remember, Roy, Tommy, you're not to mention anything about this bonus for the dot until after your father has presented it. Have you warned those two lovebirds over there? Perhaps I'd better. I want to caution both of you. Not to say a word about the check. Until you're ready to spring it on him. Your father will make the presentation, Mary. Why don't you unveil it, like a statue? Then we could all be in on this. You know, I think it'd be a better idea to put it in a bottle and uh, launch him with it. You must have gotten that idea out of a bottle. <laughs> <laughs> well, the doc isn't coming. What? Oh, what a shame. Oh, he just got busy with his new formula and forgot all about us. He'd forget the formula if he knew about that $5,000 check. Well, why don't we all go up there and give it to him? No, no, I wouldn't do that. He doesn't like business when he's experimenting. Well, Roy, can take the check up to him. That's... Sure, I'll take it. Shall I make the doc a speech when I give it to him? <laughs> you won't have to, Roy. The check speaks for itself. Yeah, and says a mouthful. Son, tell the doc we're awfully sorry he can't be with us. But of course, we understand how busy he is. All right. <laughs> Just a minute, Roy, and I'll be with you. That's it, all right. Now, what can I do for you? We were all sorry you couldn't be there tonight. Yes, yes, but you see, I'm busy. Something important, very important. Yes, of course. Mr. Morton and Dad had planned a little surprise for you. A surprise? It's in here. Well, let's see what it is. $5,000. What's this for? Just a little token of the firm's appreciation. Oh, I see. A bonus. Well, it's awfully nice of you, Father and Mr. Morton. I will thank them personally tomorrow. I'll tell them, Doctor. Well, aren't you curious about my new formula? Yes, of course, only I didn't want to be inquisitive. What is it? A new shaving lotion. Smell it. Pretty strong, isn't it? No, no. The scent evaporates a short time after you used it. Try a few drops. 
Now rub it on the tender part of your neck. Here. Soothing, isn't it? Yes. When will it be ready for the market? Oh, it's still in the experimental stage. I want to try it out on several people first and see if it works. Well, if you'd like to send me a bottle, I'll be glad to try it for you. Thanks. Good night, Doctor. Goodbye, Roy. It was your formula. Tonight they gave you $5,000 and wanted you to come down to their house and thank them for it. That was your money they gave you, like a bone tossed to a faithful dog. <laughs> Very grateful, Doctor. Very grateful. They are rich and happy, thanks to you. And what have you got, Doctor? It's a good time while our families are here to announce our engagement. Look, Don, I've loved you a long time, ever since we were kids. But I'm afraid it's been more like a sister. Well, I... I had no idea you felt that way. There's nothing I can do. You mean he's dead? Yes, I better call the coroner. You think it's murder? I don't know. I never saw anything like it before. The juggler vein is severed. Johnny Layton in here. Well, uh, what have I done now? Who, uh, who wants me fired this time? Nobody yet, but it's still early. This came in from Heathville. It's a mystery killing. Old Martin Heath's son. Who's Martin Heath? Who's Martin Heath? Say, have you ever had a date with a girl? A girl? Oh, yes, a girl. I believe I did take a girl out once. Well, did she smell sweet? Uh, did... Of course she smells sweet. Most girls do. Well, that's because of Martin Heath Cosmetics Limited. They make all that goo that the women put on their faces so they won't have to wash them with soap and water. 
Hmm, I get it. A big man, huh? Yes, and a big advertising account. Grab yourself a photographer and get along over there to Heathville. The coroner's holding an inquest. Find out who really killed old man Heath's son. Okay, McGetty, I'm on my way. Uh. Chief Wilkins? Yeah? I'm Johnny Layton of the Chicago Register. Glad to see you. And this is my cameraman, One Shot McGuire. Hi, Chief. Howdy. Say, we're down here to cover that Heath murder, but we uh, didn't get much information at the coroner's inquest. I uh, thought maybe you might be able to help us. Well, I'm always glad to cooperate with the newspapers, providing they cooperate with me. That's the policy of our paper. Well, to tell you the truth, I haven't got very far on this thing myself. Oh, here's something that might interest you. It's a picture of the victim's wound. Mm hmm You'll be able to see it better with this glass. Are these scratches on the neck and shoulders? Yes, but uh, we can't determine the source. They're too deep for fingernails, too shallow to have been made by a knife. They're more like claws. That sort of bears out Dr. Crothers' theory at the inquest of a wild animal. Have there been any circuses around here lately? No. Heard of any animal escaping from a zoo? No. Couldn't been one of those African leopard men. They use steel claws. This isn't Africa. Okay, Chief, I'm just trying to help. Chief, are you uh, sure there's no clue you're holding back while investigating? Well, since you're going to work with me on this case, there is a clue, and a very weird one. The autopsy surgeon says that such wounds could have been made by the beak and talons of a bird. A bird? Why, there aren't any birds around here big enough to attack a man. How about an eagle? We know it wasn't a bird. How do you know that? Because we found several hairs on the shoulder of Heath's coat. Ah, Chauche la Femme. They're not human hairs. What kind are they? Well, it may sound silly, but the laboratory test shows that they were from a mouse. Well, who ever heard of a mouse big enough to kill a man? Say, a bat has hair like a mouse. Well, the only bats around here are no bigger than sparrows. There was a peculiar odor about the wounds, but they were so faint and elusive that the police chemists have been unable to identify it. Then it does give us something to work on. Well, the scent was a clue. It's been destroyed by evaporation. Say, uh, Chief, do you uh, mind if I do a little sleuthing around on my own account? Certainly not. Go ahead. If I can help you any, why, uh... You can. Miss Heath seems to be the nearest to an eyewitness of the crime. I'd like to have a talk with her. Can you arrange it? I think I can. Well, Dr. Crothers refused to let her speak to us. We tried that this morning at the inquest. Well, don't you worry about Dr. Crothers. He's one of the finest men in Heathville. He just thought you'd add to Mary's grief so you could get sensational newspaper stories. I'll arrange an interview. Thanks, Chief. I'll uh, keep in touch with you. All right. Uh, 48J. Miss Heath, did your brother have any enemies that you know of? I know. Everybody in the village liked Roy. Mm-hmm. Well, what did he do at the factory? He had charge of the experimental department where the new products are developed. Oh, here comes Dr. Crothers. Hello, Doctor. Hello, Mary. I took a shortcut from my laboratory through the garden hedge. You met Dr. Crothers at the inquest this morning. Yes. Uh, Mr. Layton, I hope you'll forgive me if I seemed a little abrupt. But I found of Mary. And considering the ordeal she already went through, I wanted to protect her from dwelling too much of a tragedy. Of course. You were quite right. Uh, we're working on the case for the police now. Yes, I understand. Chief Wilkins phoned me. And if I can be of any assistance, just call on me. Thanks. Won't you sit down? Shall I serve, Mademoiselle? No, Maxine, I'll do it. You may go now. Oui, Mademoiselle. Do you take sugar, Mr. McGuire? Huh? Oh, oh no, ma'am, never. In fact, I don't even take tea. If you'll just deal me out, I'll take a look around. I may dig up a clue. <laughs> what do you think of Dr. Crothers' theory about a wild animal, Mr. Layton? Well, frankly, I don't think much of it. I can't say that I blame you. 
But I, as a scientist, take many things into consideration a layman might overlook. For instance? The jagged nature of the wound, the rapidity with which the murderer escaped, the scratches from talent or claws. But when an animal attacks a human, there's bound to be a lot of noise. You heard Miss Heath testify there was no sound of a struggle. No. Only those awful screams. It's very puzzling, very mystifying. Doctor, when you last saw Roy, did he seem worried or nervous or moody? No, not at all. On the contrary, he was in the best of spirits. Mm -hmm. Well, I've got to get back to the village now and file my story. You'll excuse me? If you find it necessary for us to talk again, you may come back at any time. This evening, if it's all right with you, I'd like to spend some time here. Well, yes, that'll be quite all right. Thank you. Goodbye, Miss Heath. Goodbye. Goodbye, Doctor. Uh, a little more chiffon, baby. I do not understand. Oh, you know what I mean. A little more your stocking. Uh, like these? Sure, I like them. Who wouldn't? Now, hold nice and still. Because this is going to take a little time. Well, if you're going to shoot, shoot. Uh, uh, right away, Johnny. Uh, I was just trying to get the focus. Mm hmm. I got it. And not bad either. I'll be back in a minute, Frenchie. And don't worry none about those werewolves. Because nothing's going to harm you while I'm around here. <laughs> you make Maxine feel so calm. My big, brave journalist. <laughs> this is my idea of nothing at all. Sitting here waiting for an animal to give us an argument. Look at that moon. Mm. And I had a date with Frenchie. Oh, stop crabbing. We're supposed to solve a murder. You, uh... Be the brave journalist. <laughs> <laughs> This is the first time I've ever been invited anywhere and asked not to shave until after I get there. I wanted to observe your exact reaction when you try the lotion. Oh, now I understand. I want this lotion to be perfect before turning it over to you to be marketed. Here. It's a little strong. That'll make the customers think they're getting their money's worth. Oh, that feels great. Very soothing. I don't think you ever use anything else. Well, we wouldn't want to market anything we wouldn't use ourselves. Mm, that almost smells good enough to be used as a cologne. Oh, what's the matter, Doc? Can't you stand your own lotion? I have a violent dislike for perfumes. Oh, I'm sorry. All right, Tommy. Good night, Doc. Goodbye, Tommy. I thought you might want some company. Shall we sit down? You know, uh, you shouldn't be wandering around the garden at night after what's happened. Neither should you. Well, but it's part of my job. Mine, too. Roy was my brother. Be careful. I think it's Tommy. Hello, Tommy. Hello, everybody. Hello, Hello Tommy. Tommy. What's up, sis? Mr. Layton wanted to stay in the garden for a while, so I joined him. Don't tell me you're waiting for that animal Dr. Carruthers mentioned. So you don't believe it either? I certainly do not. It's ridiculous. But somebody or something killed your brother. 
And I suppose you're working on the theory that the murderer always returns to the scene of the crime. Perhaps I am. Well, not for me. If you'll take my advice, Mary, you'll leave these gentlemen to their vigil and go to bed. That's what I'm going to do. Good night. Good night, Tommy. I uh, don't think your brother likes my being here. Oh, you mustn't mind, Tommy. We're all terribly upset. I know. telling you, McGetty. It was a bat. I saw it kill Tommy Heath. Listen, Johnny, I want you and One Shot to come on home or I'll fire both of you. I'm not coming home and neither is One Shot. I'm keeping him here to get a picture of the devil bat. Say, that'll look great in the headlines. Devil bat strikes again. Listen, don't tell me it had horns. Maybe I better send the wagon with the steel bars and the strong boys with the straight jackets. Look, Joe, have I ever lied to you? Plenty of times. Well, I'm not lying this time. If it ever got out that I cooked up a fake story about a devil bat, I wouldn't be able to get a job on a country weekly. Print the story, Joe. So help me, it's on the level. All right, I'll print it. But I won't believe it. Dr. One Shot gets me a picture of that devil bat in action. Don't worry, he'll get it. Goodbye. You, my friend, are going to get a shot of the devil bat in action. Who, me? How? Have you uh, noticed there's a taxidermist shop in the village? Well, you wouldn't suggest that I go out and stuff a bird, would you? One shot. To think that you'd even hint that I would suggest you have the village taxidermist build you a nice big bat for pictorial purposes. Besides, a bat isn't a bird, it's a mammal. Well, why didn't you say so in the first place? Where is this bird stuff in the Emporium? Oh, down on Cottage Grove Avenue. <laughs> Here's the idea, Frenchie. You hang on to the bat till I get my camera set up. And when I raise my hand, you give the bat a good shove, and it'll swing out just like it's flying. Then I can get a swell picture from a boss. Get it? Oui. I am wise, no? No. But hang on to the bat until I raise my hand, huh? <laughs> the idea of breaking up my devil bat. I'm going to make you pay for that. And I'm going to take you to jail until you explain this. Come on. You, you can't do this to me. I'm doing it. I was just conducting a little experiment trying to find out how the devil bat does his killing. 
I'm uh, sure McGuire didn't intend doing anything wrong. He's uh, just a little overzealous about his work. Yeah, well, with the town in an uproar, and everybody terror-stricken wondering whether he's going to be the next victim, I don't want any more trouble stirred up, even with an artificial bat. You'd uh, better get back to the hotel. I want to talk to the chief alone. Is it all right, chief? Yeah, but be careful in the future. Ever smelled anything like this before? Well, yes. That's the same stuff that's been on every one of the Devil Bat's victims. Where'd you get it? Found it in Don Morton's bathroom. Did you find out where Morton got it? No, I didn't want to arouse suspicion by asking questions till after it's been analyzed. You think it has any connection with the murders? That's the way it strikes me, but I, uh, I can't figure out how. Well, I'll get the police cameras on it right away. I'll snoop around and see if I can find out where Morton got it. Well, it probably came from down at the Heath Cosmetic Plant. I have men working on a theory of a disgruntled factory employee committing the crimes. It's certainly more than coincidental that all the victims have been members of the Heath and Morton families. Yeah. Looks like a plot to wipe them all out. I uh, wish the rest of them would leave town until this crime is solved. You're worried about Mary, aren't you? Well, yes. I've been urging her to leave, but she won't go without her father. And he insists on remaining here to help clear up the crime. And worse than that, neither Heath nor Morton will let me give them a bodyguard. I guess we'll just have to wait for something to break. Good night, Chief. Good night, Johnny. Boy, have I got a picture on Lach McGinty dead. Meet the devil bat. Well, how about that wire? Looks as if the bat's on a flying trapeze. Oh, but I'm not through working on it yet. See, I can touch this picture up so the bat will look like he's got nothing around him, but nothing. <laughs> okay, Rembrandt, you win. This is your news commentator, Walter King. Tonight we're broadcasting from the little village of Heathville, where an alleged devil bat has claimed three victims during the past six weeks. You will note that I say alleged devil bat. That, ladies and gentlemen, is because your correspondent has been very skeptical from the start as to the existence of this horrendous creature. I have as my guest in the studio tonight Professor Percival Garland Rains, perhaps the world's greatest authority on animal life. I'm going to interview Professor Rains on the subject of the devil bat. Our radio audience may draw its own conclusions. Professor Rains, first let me ask you point blank, do you believe that any such creature as the devil bat exists? I do not. He's got a nerve. Quiet. In the Dark Ages, when men and women lived in caves, there may have existed a bat of this size. But not in this day and age. How do you account for the fact that Mary Heath, whose two brothers were victims of the devil bat, and a newspaper reporter, John Layton, claim to have seen this amazing creature? Sometimes, under stress of excitement, our minds play tricks on us. Hey, he's insinuating you saw the little bat that wasn't there. Pipe down. But how about the picture of the devil bat published by Mr. Layton's paper? I examined that picture under a powerful magnifying glass. I denounce it as a fraud. Whoever constructed the strange-looking monster forgot to remove a label from the silk. From the silk used on its left wing. That label reads, Made in Japan. Put through a hurry call to Heathville. I want to talk to Johnny Layton. He's at the Heathville Hotel. One guess who that is. Yeah, McGinty. Go ahead, pour it on. So you slipped over a fake picture on me, huh? Well, you're fired, both of you. And I'll see to it that you never work on another newspaper as long as I live. Made in Japan. You tell one shot McGuire he ought to be snapping photos in a booby hatch. Both of you, come on in and get your final checks. Oh, no. We're not coming in to get anything. All right, so we're fired. But we're staying here just the same. I saw that bat. We're going to stay here till we catch that bat, and when we do, I'm going to bring it in and stuff it down your throat. Goodbye. Well, we're fired. Mm-hmm. Again. That's him calling back to apologize. Now, you give him a good scare. No use begging us to go to work for you again, McGetty. You fired us and we're staying fired. 
Oh, oh, Mary, I, I thought it was somebody else. Johnny, why did you make a joke of a tragic thing like this? But it wasn't intended as a joke, Mary. I was only trying to get the news. I suppose you call it getting the news when you arrange to print a picture that's a deliberate hoax that has the entire country laughing. A grand joke, Johnny, but somehow I can't appreciate it. But I can explain that picture. Don't try, Johnny. Made in Japan. I ought to skin you alive and nail your hide to a barn door. Here's the chemistry part on that shaving lotion. I see he couldn't break down one of the ingredients. Yes, he said it must be some element with which he's not familiar. We won't get anywhere until we identify it. There's just one other man in this town that might be able to help us. Dr. Carruthers. Yeah, Carruthers could help us. I found out he compounded that lotion. Well, if you suspect Carruthers, you're barking up the wrong tree, Johnny. He's the last man in this town that would harm anyone. Why, everybody loves him. Maybe so. But here's something else I dug up. The Heath and Morton fortunes are based on a greaseless cold cream formula Dr. Crudders invented. So what? All the doctor got out of it was $10,000, and the others made a fortune. Well, it's common knowledge that he sold out for cash when he could have had an interest in the firm. Just the same, every victim had this stuff from his laboratory on him. Maybe you've been working too hard on this case, Johnny. Well, I'd just like to get his reaction on the stuff. If he denies knowing anything about it, we'll know there's a tie-up somewhere. I think you're bombing. But just to show you that I'm following up every clue, we'll talk to him. We'll uh, put this in another bottle, and without telling him we know he compounded it, ask him to analyze it. Doc, I hope we're not upsetting your work barging in on you this way. No, no, not at all. I'm anxious to help solve these crimes. All of the victims were very dear friends of mine. Here's a sample of the stuff young Morton and the two Heath boys had on them when they were attacked by the devil bat. Of course, it doesn't make sense to me that a bird would choose only people using that particular stuff. A bat is not a bird. It's a mammal. Well, anyway, our police chemist couldn't break down one of the ingredients. We thought perhaps you could. Why, I compounded this myself. It's a new shaving lotion I'm experimenting with. The ingredient your chemist couldn't break down, I discovered years ago in Tibet. How did you happen to put it in a shaving lotion? Oh, the lamas use it in some of their religious rites as a perfume. The scent is very pleasant and can't be imitated by competitors. But what were Don Morton and the two Heath boys doing with the stuff? Oh, it is the policy of our firm to try out any new product before marketing it. Well, that knocks our theory into a cocked hat. Yeah. We were hoping the unknown ingredient might turn out to be some sort of a clue. This isn't the kind of bottle I give it out in. But I presume your chemist changed it when making the analysis. Yeah. Is there anything else I can do to help? Tell me, did you hear Professor Raines on the radio last night? Yes. It was very interesting and very asinine. You mean you believe there is a devil bat? Why not? You saw it, didn't you? Well, sure I did. So did Mary. Then why worry about what one scientist says? That uh, one scientist got me fired. Oh. You mean uh, your newspaper discharged you? That's right. Oh, that's too bad. Then you're believing Heathsville before the mystery is solved. I'm afraid not. I'm going to stay here and work with the chief. Since you're going to stay here for a while, I would like you to try out a bottle of the new lotion and tell me how you like it. And you too, Chief. No, no, not me, Doc. If my wife ever smelled perfume on me, she'd suspect me, sure. <laughs> <laughs> well, Mr. Layton, I understand you are not married. All right, I'll try it in the morning when I shave. I guess we'd better be going, Chief. See you later, Doc. So long, Dr. Crothers. Goodbye. Mr. Layton. Mm. 
What's the matter? What's the matter? Does that uh, smelly shaving lotion put you to sleep? Well, why'd you tell the doc you're going to use it if you think it's smelly? Oh, I don't know. I uh, guess I was a little ashamed of ever suspecting the old doc. Well, I like it, and I'm going to tell him so. Uh, what time is it? After midnight. Midnight? Oh, there ain't no use of waiting around here any longer. This must be the bat's night off. <laughs> Listen, Johnny, I'm going to cook that bird personally for McGinney, and I'll even stuff it myself. <laughs> I came to Heathville today to examine the body of this so-called devil bat. But after seeing it personally and making exhaustive research, I've arrived at the conclusion that the creature is the lone survivor of a type of giant bat which existed in great numbers during the early part of the Neolithic age. Perhaps I should explain for the benefit of some of our listeners that the Neolithic age is that period of antiquity commonly called the Stone Age. <laughs> Imbecile, bombastic ignoramus. McGinty, but uh, one shot and I are not interested. At your prices. Of course, if there was a raise of, say, 20... Uh, 30. 30 dollars plus a fat bonus, we uh, might consider it. You're hold up, men. Both of you. I refuse to be robbed. Have it your way, McGinty. Have it your way. But uh, we have the Bats Corpus Delecti and the exclusive picture. Of course, I've got an eyewitness story that two syndicates are bidding for. And don't forget, you got to pay us for the time we were fired. That's better. Now you're talking, boss. Okay, we're working for you again. We'll gather up the loose ends and see you in a couple of days. Goodbye. <laughs> Come in. Hello, Johnny. We're married. Johnny, I came to tell you that I'm sorry I said what I did the last time we talked. Do you suppose... <laughs> well, I don't know how to say it, but... I do. Uh, uh, Miss Heath. Uh, do you suppose that little French girl would apologize to me if I looked her up? Well, I'm positive she would. <laughs> <laughs>
behind it. You will be even greater than your unfortunate predecessor. Enraged, aren't you? Fine. I'm enraged also. Tonight I shall call on Henry Morton and you shall strike him down. Henry, the lotion has turned out to be better than I had hoped. I want you to try it. Well, well, just leave it here, Doc, and, and I'll try it in the morning after shaving. It smells good, doesn't it? Yes, but isn't it too strong? No, no, no. Evaporation quickly tones it down just to the right scent. Rub a few drops on your face. Well, I'd rather wait until after I shave. Then my skin will be more tender and receptive to a lotion. Uh, well, uh, just a little here. The texture of the skin there is always very delicate. I give you a few, few drops in your hand. I hope you're right about that scent evaporating quickly. I smell the high heavens. Perhaps that will be the secret of its success. Well, you can never tell what's going to happen in this business. You can believe me, Henry. You don't have to worry. Yes, I can believe that, Doc. All of your formulas have been highly successful. Well, I've been going over the report of the company's annual earnings. A net profit of over a million dollars. Not bad, eh? When you remember what we built on, a mere $10,000 for your formula. You shouldn't have demanded all cash, Doc. You should have ridden along with us. Then you'd be rich, too. Well, but then you've had a lot of fun in your laboratory with your experiments, dreaming up something new. You're a dreamer, Doc. Too much money is bad for dreamers. So you try to pay me in flattery, telling me that I'm a dreamer. Well, I do dream. Dreams that you could never guess. Your nerves are frayed, Doc. Now calm down. Get a grip on yourself. You've been working too hard on your formula. Formula? That's but child's play for a great scientist. Your brain is too feeble to conceive what I have accomplished in the realm of science. Doc? You've made some great scientific discovery. What is it? When you'll find out, Henry, it'll be too late for you. Oh, come, come, Doc. You can't pretend to control a man's destiny. I've already proved it three times. I'm sorry. Perhaps you're right, Henry, about my working too hard. I guess I'm a little tired. I better go home and get some rest. Sure. A night's sleep will do you good. Good night, Doc. Goodbye, Henry. Six J. Hello? Oh, that's you, Martin? Yes, Henry. I want you to call Chief of Police Wilkins to come to your house immediately. It's very important. Chief's here now. Well, don't let him leave until I get there. What on earth happened? I think I've got a clue to all those murders. It may peter out, but if half what I suspect is true, it's the most diabolical plot that a madman ever concocted. What is it? Talk about the absent-minded professor. I forgot my hat. Henry, what is it? I'll tell you all about it when I get there. I hope I didn't intrude on a private conversation. <laughs> no, nothing important.
I hope Henry was right about having a clue. But why didn't he explain more about it when he phoned? When I insisted, he changed his tone as if he'd been interrupted. I was afraid that he might be overheard. What is that squeaky sound? Oh, just some night noise. I feel much better, Mr. Heath, since you ask us to stay in your home until this new devil bat has been killed. I've been worried about Mary. What reason have you to believe that Mary is in danger? Only this. I'm convinced that someone is using the bat to wipe out the entire Heath and Morton families. As a scientist, I assure you, the thought of a human controlling a bat is fantastic. Just the same, no villager has been killed or even attacked. You're forgetting, aren't you, that Mr. McGuire was attacked. He's not a member of either family. Why, I'm practically a member of this family already. I'm going to marry Miss Heath's maid. <laughs> oh, really? <laughs> well, boys, I'll have Maxine show you to your room. Thank you. I must be running along home. It's past my bedtime. Good night, gentlemen. Good night, Good night Martin. Good night, Doctor. Good night, Doctor. Goodbye, madam. Come along. Maxine? We met today. Did you fill my perfume bottles with something new? Oh, no, mademoiselle. I never touch your perfume. It's funny. I don't recognize it. Perhaps Dad filled them as a surprise. He always does that with every new perfume the plant puts out. Is there anything else? No, Maxine, that's all. Good night. Good night, mademoiselle. I want you to tell me everything you did just before that bat tried to get in. Well, first I took a bath. Then I brushed my hair, and Maxine came in and turned the covers down. And then fastened the screen, which somehow had come unhooked. Yeah? Go ahead, what else? Well, uh, then we talked about some new perfume that someone had put in my dressing table bottles. Dad, did you put any new perfume in my bottles? No, I didn't. Is that the stuff? Yes. Tony, this smells like... Hey, quiet. I've got a hunch that I want to follow up. And I'll need everybody's cooperation. We'll do everything we can. Of course. What's Carruthers' number? 48J. Operator, give me 48J, please. Hello, Dr. Carruthers. This is Johnny Layton. That's right. Something terrible has happened to Mary. Can you hurry over? I'll be right there. Good. Oh, wait, Johnny, I'm all right. I don't need a doctor. That's where the cooperation part comes in, Mary. You'll have to pretend to be a nervous wreck. 
Mr. Heath, you and one shop must help her trick Dr. Crothers into staying here as long as you can. Where are you going, Johnny? To uh, do a little private bat hunting. <laughs> Devil bat, try to get through that window. If she's suffering from fright, I give her a setup. Mm. Where's Mr. Layton? Why, well, I guess he's out in the garden hunting the devil bat. Layton is a very brave young man. Gives heat one of these every half an hour. We, oui, Doctor. It will quieten her nerves. But, Doc, hadn't you better stay until she's quieter? <laughs> She'll be all right in the morning. Oh. Hey, Doc, I don't feel so good myself. Would you mind taking my temperature? You look perfectly well, Mr. McGuire. Well, you ought to see my tongue. It looks just like a squirrel's tail. Look. Oh. Try some calomel. Dangerous for me if they found you here. Doc, I hope I'm not intruding. No, no, not at all. I heard you were out stalking the devil bat. Any success? No, but I uh, thought maybe you might be able to help me. Well, I don't see how that's possible, but, but if you can suggest anything... Uh... Well, you could give me some more of that new concoction of yours, that shaving lotion. But how on earth could that possibly help catch the devil bat? I've still got a crazy idea that if I douse myself with it, it might attract the killer. I don't see how you can connect the two. But there is a bottle of the lotion on the table. Thanks.
You see, Doc, I figured out something. All four of the murdered people had this lotion on them when the devil bat struck. Now, my plan is to sit in the garden, and when the killer makes one of those power dives, I'll blast him. Leighton, I'm afraid all these murders have affected your mind. Maybe you'd like to come along, Doc, and be an eyewitness. I'm sure it would be just a waste of time, but I'd be glad to watch your experiment. Good. I knew I could count on you to help me. I tell you, Leighton, expecting a bat to be attracted by the scent of a lotion is all foolishness. I think I better run around. Ah, sit down, Doc. The uh, devil bat's behind schedule tonight. You uh, aren't very chummy tonight. What's the matter? The firearms always make me nervous. Oh. I thought maybe you didn't want to be sitting too close to me. Uh, just in case the devil bat does show up. According to your theory, the killer wouldn't attack me. I haven't any of that lotion on me. You have now, Doc. Why did you do that? To make it a 50-50 proposition, Doc. Now sit down. And don't try any shenanigans. Not so funny when it's your own juggler vein that's in danger. Is it, Doc? I... I don't know what you're talking about. Maybe you made a mistake when you let that devil bat of yours out of the attic tonight. Don't worry about the bat killing you. I'm saving you for the hangman. Tell me, Doc, how did you uh, develop a monster bat like that? You wouldn't understand the scientific theory. fellow, don't think that you're the only man working on this case. And it was lucky I was here, too. Thanks. Did you kill the devil bat? No, he got away. Well, here's one bird that didn't get away, and he's the murderer we've both been looking for. <laughs> Quick, shoot it! <laughs> Where is it? It's gone. And so's the doctor. Did you get the bat? What happened? Doc Carruthers is the murderer. And he's hiding somewhere in the garden. You fellas get back to the house and guard Mary. Come on. Doctor? Dr. Carruthers! Doctor? Has anything happened to Johnny? Is he hurt? They took him up to my place. You better come along with me.
bird out of connection. Prince Baron's Palace. Answering Flash Gordon. Hello, Zarkov. Your contrathermal is a success, sir. We've extinguished the projectile. Let us know where any more of the projectiles fall. It works perfectly. We still have two more units. That's splendid, Flash. Two more projectiles have fallen. The locations are two. The connection's gone. Zarkov! Your Highness, a Ming bomber is over the ballot. The crows will take care of it. They've been warned. I'll have this prepared in a moment, Your Highness. That bomber doesn't score another bullseye. You made a direct hit zone, close to the wall of the laboratory. I can see the flash when the bomb struck. There's one of Baron's ships coming. Two more coming in from above. Surroundings. Zarkov speaking. Yes, sir. Yes, go ahead, Doctor. One of Ming ships have bombed us. The patrols have driven it off. Good. Now tell us where those projectiles have fallen. One of the projectiles fell about 30 miles west of... Make it look like a crash so they won't follow us down. A clear hit, Brad. The last shot finished them. Calling Prince Baron's castle. Calling Prince Baron's castle. Enemy ship met and destroyed. That is all. Get our location. Captain Torch calling up from Ming. Captain Torch calling up from Ming. This is the palace of the Emperor. This is Captain Torch speaking from Avore. This is of vital importance. Wait, Captain Torch. Inform His Majesty that Captain Torch is calling from Avore. My plan is failing. Projectiles are being extinguished as soon as they strike it. Your Majesty must remember that Dr. Zarko is a Prince Baron. The doctor is a clever man. He may have discovered some means of defense against The counteracting force is known only to myself. A new cause. The 
You knew when you were alone in my laboratory with Dr. Sarkoff before he escaped. If you have dared betray any of my secrets to him, I'll... Captain Torch is calling from Arboria, Majesty. Get Arboria. Yes, sir. Prince Baron's power plant. We were attacked and forced to land. You have failed. Sarkov is extinguishing our projectiles as fast as they land. Your Majesty, we dropped the bombs direct. Get into Prince Baron's castle by any way that you can devise. Learn what the plans are and report to me. The lives of all of you are staked upon this venture. There's no need of all of us going. The ship has to be repaired before we can make our escape. That's right. I can repair the damage while you go to the castle. this instrument would be effective in an attack upon me? Unquestionably. The difficulty is that in launching its neutralizing cartridge, the gun destroys itself. And the explosion releases a poisonous gas that would destroy all life over a wide area. Oh, but of course. It would have to be operated by a fuse. Well, if the gun will do what you claim for it, we'll overcome the objection. How bad? There's a desolate stretch of uninhabited land to the west of Ming's capital called the Land of the Dead, to which we might transport the gun and direct it upon the castle. Your Highness is pardoned. But would not such a course endanger the life of the Princess Aura? Thanks for considering the safety of the Princess Roko, but she's not in immediate danger. Sarkov's instrument, as he explained it, has a powerful magnetic action designed to paralyze Ming's power plant so as to render his ships and guns useless. Fire! Fire! I just caught part of a message from Ming on this short wave set. From Ming? Well, I'm sure it was the voice of Ming, but I caught only a few words. He said, the lives of all of you were staked upon this venture. I waited, but he said nothing more. Do you think it means that we're to be attacked? Get there. He'll know you. Of course, but I can hold his attention for a moment. All right. Keep his back to me. It's necessary that I have audience with Prince Baron at once. I will explain everything to his highness. Let me... You go with my prisoner? Yes, the prince will see you. If I'm not mistaken, he'll have you hanged from the highest turret for the abduction of Princess Aura. Wait. If Ming is planning an attack, our best defense is to beat him to the punch. If we can place the neutralizer in the land of the dead now, at once, Ming must be keeping a strict guard over Aura, or she would have communicated with us before now. I'll have a ship made ready for the journey. There's something about this gun destroying itself that I don't understand. The Emperor will be unable to put his spaceships into the air, nor to maintain contact with those already there. His water supply will be in danger. Hold your hands! Both of you! What does this mean? You shall be reported. Just a moment, Professor. This is Captain Torch. You have good eyes, Roker. Now stand aside while I destroy that deadly machine. No, no, you shall not destroy it. Suit yourself. You first, and then the machine. Your Highness wishes to see me? will not stand on ceremony, Father. I demand my instant release and return to Prince Baron's domain. Since Baron entertains my enemies, the Earthmen, he too becomes my enemy and you a hostage. Unless you release me at once, Father. Flash Gordon and Dr. Zarkov will return here and pull you from your throne as they did once before. As they did once before. Yet I still survive, still rule the universe while they... Yes, while they... ...are at this moment headed for certain destruction and a trap that I have prepared for them. The audience is at an end, Your Highness. Flash, we're not endangering Aura by turning this machine against me. Tell us, are we? Oh, why, no, Dale. You see, its purpose is to generate a magnetic influence that will paralyze Ming's power plants and weapons of defense, making it impossible for him to defend himself against an attack. What, what will happen to us in this land of the dead that we're heading for? I've never been there, but I heard tales that at one time it was inhabited by a race of rockmen that long ago passed into oblivion. Look! A big ship! 
Torch calling Emperor Ming. Captain Torch calling Emperor Ming. All right, Torch. You know their destination. Your speed ship will get you to the land of the dead before them. When they come, destroy their ship. Plant your plastic mine in the vicinity of Giant Dome Rock. It is the only place that Zarkov can direct his new weapon at my palace. It shall be done, Your Majesty. narrow cuts we will not be visible when Baron's ship arrives. Hey, folks, we've got enough sin tonight there to shatter a convent. We've got to lay this mine and be well into the air before Prince Baron's expedition arrives. Better place a guard to warn us in case they get here before we're ready to clear out. I'll watch for their ship from that ledge. Ming's latest development. When the ray reaches number five, her blast goes off. All right, men. Cover it up. That's enough. We'll find Sonia and get to the ship. Devils are these. Not as bad as the one we planted. Get us out of here quick. We'll all be blown out of here. It's 
Timer and stop the explosion. 